This week on the CNET Tech Review, rock melt your Facebook off with the new browser. The Samsung Continuum doubles down on touchscreens. Best Tube downloads YouTube to your phone. And Brian Cooley picks a fight with iPhone fans. It's all coming up right now. Hi everyone, I'm Molly Wood and welcome to the CNET Tech Review, where we collect our hottest videos of the week and tell you what's good and what's bad in the world of tech, and of course, offer that unique tech wisdom in the form of the bottom line. Let's get started with the good. The internet was a buzz this week about Rockmelt. It's a new web browser that aims to help you manage all of your social networking needs. Here's Seth Rosenblatt to show you how it works. While rumors of a Facebook phone persist, one company has gone ahead and created an unofficial Facebook browser, Rockmelt, backed by Mosaic founder Mark Anderson, among others, is so tied to Facebook that at the time of the browser's release, you couldn't even get an invite to download it without having a Facebook account. Rockmelt is more of a competitor for the social networking friendly Flock browser than anything else. But if that's what you're looking for, you're really going to like Rockmelt. It takes the sidebar, which interestingly made its Chromium debut in Flock 3, and mirrors it, creating dual narrow sidebars. The left sidebar, called the Friends Edge, is dedicated to your Facebook friends, showing who's online, filterable by favorites, and a Show All Friends button. The right sidebar, the App Edge, is where you can toggle social networks, providing one click access to your Facebook newsfeed, your Facebook profile, and your Twitter account. An indicator will tell you when you've got new updates. Chrome extensions that you install will also live here, although they don't always work. Rockmelt has a few neat tricks up its sleeve. There's a share button at the right edge of the URL bar from which you can quickly share a link to Facebook or Twitter with a note. Also, when you land on a page with an RSS feed, Rockmelt will auto-detect it and provide a one-click button for subscribing. Besides the sidebars, sorry, edges, there are two design changes in Rockmelt worth noting. The first is that the unified options menu has been shifted to the left of the browser, mimicking designs seen in Opera and the upcoming Firefox 4. The edges can be toggled here in the options menu or by hotkey, but Rockmelt also resurrects the dedicated search box. Since the location bar here possesses the same omni powers that it does in Chromium, as well as Facebook friend searching, it's not entirely clear why the browser has sacrificed the screen real estate. Note that it won't search your Twitter contacts. Given the premium that the sidebars force on open screen space, I can't say that this was a good idea. More importantly, Rockmelt unabashedly forces you to log in to your Facebook account and share your friends list with it before you can use the browser. The company says that it doesn't share your data with anyone, and I'm inclined to take them at face value simply because these social networking features require a trade-off. If you're not comfortable sacrificing that level of privacy, choose a different browser. At the time of its release in November 2010, Rockmelt is also a security risk. It's built on version 6 of Chromium, while the stable build of Chrome is already well into version 7 and is expected to hit version 8 before 2011. Given the hypersocial privacy busting behavior that Rockmelt encourages, running without the most up to date security patches poses a massive potential security risk to users. Rockmelt is an encouraging take on the social networking browser phenomenon, presenting an interesting alternative to Flock. It still has numerous kinks and bugs to be worked out, but if you live and die by Facebook and Twitter, this might just be the browser for you. It's currently available on CNETdownload.com. The first look at Rockmelt, I'm Seth Rosenblatt. Man, that whole security thing is just kind of a buzzkill, isn't it? I mean, like Twitter or protect my bank information. I guess maybe just launch Chrome for banking? Rockmelt's really fun though. Now remember when just having a touch screen on your phone was a big deal? Well, if the new Samsung Continuum catches on, having only one touch screen will just be kind of sad. Hi, I'm Bonnie Pass, senior editor at CNET.com, and we're here in New York, uh, where Samsung and Verizon just unveiled the Samsung Continuum. This is Samsung's latest Galaxy S phone, and it's unique in that it has two displays. You have a 3.4 inch Super AMOLED display here, as well as a Super AMOLED ticker display down here. The ticker display acts as a notifications bar for your news feeds, as well as social networking updates. 
It'll also alert you to new messages and voicemail and such. You can also use it to control your music player. The phone also has grip sensor technology, so if the main screen is off, you can actually just touch the bottom here and it'll activate the ticker display so you can just see your updates without having to re-wake your phone. As far as the other parts of the design, it's very much like the other Galaxy S series. It's nice and thin and lightweight, a little bit plasticky, which I've said before, but not too bad. It's running Android 2.1, but will be upgradable to Android 2.2. Has a 1 gigahertz hummingbird processor, as well as a 5 megapixel camera with HD video capture. Like the Fascinate, unfortunately, Bing is going to be the default search engine, as well as the mapping application on here. But overall, it looks like a very nice phone. We're looking forward to checking out the ticker display to see if it's really useful or just a novelty feature. The Samsung Continuum will be available for pre-order on November 11th and in stores on November 18th and the cost is $199.99 with a two-year contract and after $100 mail-in rebate. I'm Bonnie Chan. This has been your first look at the Samsung Continuum for Verizon Wireless. You know, the Continuum is also the gadget of the week over on my other show, The Buzz Report, just in case you haven't seen it. On this show, we talk a lot about sexy smartphones and flashy tablets and even burly muscle cars. But there are also plenty of digital cameras and monitors and even printers that never get a chance to shine. So here's a look at a few of these sometimes overlooked products. Hey everyone, I'm Eric Franklin from CNET.com and today we're taking a first look at the Samsung SyncMaster FX2490HD. The FX is sleek and stylish looking with a very thin profile and a unique looking chrome footstand. When knocked from the sides, the footstand does a good job of keeping the monitor from falling over, but the panel still wobbles a lot when knocked. The panel tilts back 10 degrees and swivels right and left 30 degrees, but no other ergonomic options are included. The connection options include two HDMI ports, component and composite ports, a coaxial antenna in, an optical audio out port, a headphone jack, a USB port, and an EX link port. The FX includes a Samsung TV-like remote and is the preferred way of navigating the OSD. Picture options include typical controls like brightness, contrast, sharpness, and some custom presets. Also, there's a color temperature option and an option to adjust the red, green, and blue values individually. In movies, the Samsung displayed dark detail just as well as on the Samsung PX2370. What stood out most was the apparent green push noticeable in character faces, making them appear sickly compared to the healthy looking faces of the PX2370. However, we were able to make some color adjustments in the settings and things improved greatly. We found games to deliver a vibrant image with no hint of that green color tint problem after calibration at least. In power consumption, the FX would cost $9.53 per year to run compared with the PX2370's $7.65 per year. The FX has performance that rivals the PX2370. It also has some of the best movie and games performance we've seen recently and has a near full assortment of HD TV connection options. Still, for $419, Samsung offers essentially a 24-inch television at a very appealing price. Once again, this is Eric Franklin, and this has been the first look at the Samsung SyncMaster FX2490 HD. Hi, I'm Josh Goldman, Senior Editor with CNET, and this is a look at the Canon PowerShot SD4500IS. It's the company's smallest compact mega zoom, featuring a 10x optical zoom, though the lens isn't wide angle, so it's not as flexible as some competing models. Similarly, it has a 3-inch LCD on back, but it's a standard 233,000 dot resolution instead of a higher resolution screen uh, that we're seeing on other high-end compact mega zooms. Overall, though, it's a nice design if you're looking for a simple, easy-to-use compact mega zoom that's small enough to fit in a shirt pocket. The SD4500 is the second power shot with a high-sensitivity 10 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. Now that sensor mainly improves low light photo quality, but it also allows for some speedy burst shooting, getting up to 3.6 frames per second. There are faster compacts, but they usually make you wait while the camera stores the photos and the Canon doesn't. 
However, the rest of its shooting performance is average bordering on slow. Its photo quality is overall very good thanks to generally excellent color, but like most cameras in this category, subjects look soft and benefit from a little sharpening. The SD4500 is also capable of recording nice looking movies at resolutions up to full HD 1080p at 24 frames per second, and there's a stereo mic in front and use of the optical zoom while recording. There's also a super slow motion mode that records video at 240 frames per second at a resolution of 320 by 240, so really only suitable for viewing on a small screen, but it's fun nonetheless. All of these features and its small size seem to come at the cost of battery life though. The little rechargeable pack is only rated for 150 shots and using any of the burst or movie modes put a real hurt on, on battery life. But if frequent recharging doesn't bother you or you're willing to buy an extra battery, the camera is certainly a compact mega zoom worth considering. I'm Josh Goldman and that's the Canon PowerShot SD4500 IS. Hi, I'm Justin Yu, Associate Editor for CNET.com with a first look at the Oki B431DN monochrome laser printer. So its boxy shape and generic aesthetic may be easily confused with other printers, but this one deserves your extra attention. The appeal of the $350 B431DN lies in its simple setup, ease of use, and extra features like an auto duplexer for double-sided printing, and an Ethernet networking that lets multiple users print at the same time. All controls live on top of the unit here, and you get your standard array of buttons and a two-line LCD, which is really all you need for a simple monochrome. We're also big fans of the dual paper inputs as well. The main tray pulls out of the bottom and fits 250 sheets of paper, but there's also a multi-purpose tray above it that can fit another 100 sheets. Most printers only give you 250. So if you're looking for an efficient printer for simple jobs like business documents and text pages, the B431DN won't disappoint. It printed faster than all four of our competitive printers at an impressive 33.86 pages per minute, and it also has the quality to match. For its modern features, affordable price tag, and fast output speed, the Oki B431DN exceeds our expectations for a small business printer, and it's well deserving of our CNET Editor's Choice Award. So I'm Justin Yu, this is the Oki B431DN, and that sounds good to me. Sounds good to me too, Justin. But enough of that for right now. We'll get back to the cool phones and apps right after this quick break when the CNET Tech Review continues. Welcome back to the CNET Tech Review, our weekly video digest of all things good and bad we've seen here at CNET TV. Continuing on in the good, have you ever tried to show somebody a hilarious YouTube video on your phone only to find out that you can't get a signal? I know, bummer. Well, thanks to a new app called Best Tube, you'll be able to play your favorite videos wherever you are. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome to Tap That App. I'm Brian Tong, and this is the show where we cover the hottest apps in the mobile space. Now, we all love watching YouTube videos on the go, but what if you want to save those videos to your phone so you can watch the high quality versions anytime? Check out the free app in the Android Marketplace called Best Tube by Jared W. Smith for Android phones. The app showcases the most popular and top rated videos, but you can also search for a video that you're looking for. Once you've found it, you'll have the option to preview it or download it directly to your phone's SD card. You'll want to make sure you're on Wi-Fi when you use this app because the quality of the file will depend on your phone's current bandwidth and Edge or 3G can be iffy. Now once it's downloaded, you can view your favorite YouTube videos whenever and wherever you want and if you use a long press, you'll also have other options to save the file as an MP3 or copy and rename it. It's a free app, but one negative is the ad banner that appears over each downloaded video. If you click on it once, it'll take you to another screen, but it will never show up again. Now there aren't any apps like this available through the iPhone, Palm, or Blackberry's official app store, so it makes Best Tube unique and easy to set up. If you're looking to save those YouTube videos you just can't get enough of, then go with Best Tube, and best of all, it's free. Now if you guys have any other apps or dance moves you'd like to see, send us along an email to tap that app at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Ooh, the shoulder. Finally.
Finally, I can watch the Bed Intruder song anytime I want, which is pretty often. You know that one, right? Had your kids, had your wife, had your kids, had your wife, and had your husband, cause they raped their body on hip. All right, I hope that made you feel good because now it's time for the bad. Sometimes it's hard to find a product that qualifies as bad for this show because most of the things we review have at least some redeeming qualities. But that is hardly the case with this new cell phone for Metro PCS. I'm Jessica Dahlcourt with CNET.com looking at the ZTE Agent for Metro PCS. Now unfortunately, this is one of those phones that has little to recommend it. It's tall and slim with a soft touch back cover that makes it grip well and feel comfortable in the hand. And it can slip into almost any pocket. The screen is also nice and large for the phone's height and fairly sharp and clear looking. However, we did find that the navigation buttons below the screen are a bit constricted and you can see how tall and narrow the talk and end keys are. And this circular toggle here, it's a bit too small to make navigation very finger friendly. We do like the shortcut to the music player, we'll give it that, and we also enjoyed that the dial pad buttons are almost scaled so that typing in a phone number was no problem. On the back is a 1.3 megapixel camera and camcorder, plus a vanity mirror. Inside, there's a slew of Metro PCS branded apps, including a navigator, plus all of your usual organizer tools like the calendar. There's instant messaging and the Metro web browser, plus some other preloaded apps like Looped. We do have to say that call quality was pretty poor in our tests. So to bring it all together, the Agent is a prepaid phone that'll cost you $69. That's a typical price for a not too fancy phone you buy without a contract. But frankly, you can get better phones with Metro PCS for less or for a few dollars more. We'd recommend you keep shopping around. This is Jessica Dahlcourt from CNET looking at the ZTE Agent for Metro PCS. Okay, so I guess if you like wasting money on phones that don't really do much, then I guess this could be the phone for you. And also I want to meet you, because why would you do that? <laughs> now let's see what we've got in this week's bottom line. The battle between the iPhone and Android phones is raging, and both sides of the fight have their own upsides and downsides. So leave it to Brian Cooley in this week's top five to draw a line in the sand. Okay, I gotta get my gear on for this one. Not sure what's gonna get winged at me for this bit of sacrilege. It's top five reasons Android is better than iPhone. As laid out by the team at CNET's Android Atlas Weekly Podcast. Yeah, I know that sounds like we're comparing an OS to a product line, but you get it. We're gonna compare the universes here. OS, devices, apps, and carriers between the two hottest smartphone platforms in the world. Here we go. Number five, Android is open source. The folks behind it don't care if you hack the phone you paid for. And they don't play games trying to outfox the way you did it. Instead, they have lives. And the Android marketplace? That's pretty much the Jezebel of apps, welcoming one and all with wide open uh, listings. Add in the alternate Android marketplaces, and it all adds up to app democracy. Now, yes, that does mean you can get some lousy, buggy, scammy apps but you and developers are treated like a bunch of grown-ups in the Android world, not like you're going to a daycare. Number four, real multitasking. Yes, iOS does multitasking now, but not to the true degree Android does. Apps there are free to do their thing, like programs on a personal computer. And yes, as with a computer, it means you can run into some conflicts, but see note one above about daycare. Number three, Adobe's Flash. Android phones support it, Apple's don't, and won't. It means your Android phone can hit the web, all of it, with a browser, not a custom app for each website you want to run well on your phone. Website apps aren't always cool innovation, sometimes they're just baggage, and with Android you don't have to use them. Number two, handsets, lots of them. There are something like 80 Android phones and counting. Apple has two, really one and a half. Simplicity's worked well for them, but then again, there's that choice thing. Android has choice of features through all those handsets. Features you want, features you don't. 
Choice of a real keyboard or just a pretend one on the screen. Choice of a device with removable battery. Memory expansion slot. You get the idea. As we see everyone adopting smartphones, can one or one and a half devices really fit all? Before we check out the number one reason Android makes iPhone look like the phone for sheeple, let's look at why we're even talking about this. Android's on fire. In the U.S. market, it outsold iPhone in Q3 of 2010 to grab 44% of smartphone shipments against Apple's 26%. That comparison? Unthinkable a year ago. Globally, Android shipments are up 1,300% in a year to 20 million worldwide. Apple still dominates in the number of apps available, but where do you think that trend line's gonna be going? And finally, the number one reason Android is better than iPhone really is carriers, that pesky choice thing again. Android phones are on a bunch of carriers. iPhone is and always has been just on AT&T. And even if you're one of the six people who've never heard the constant complaints about AT&T's network, you still might not want to move to it. Maybe you just like your carrier. Well, they've probably got a good Android phone waiting for you. So if you're now thinking Apple might be more 1984 than not, you'll want to check out CNET's Android Atlas Weekly Podcast, hosted by Justin Eckhaus and a variety of other experts he plucks from around CNET every week. Just head to CNET.com slash live. And for more top five goodness, it's top5.cnet.com. I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching. The bottom line this week? Oh, yes, he did. I would not want to be opening Brian's mail this week, but we look forward to your unbiased and well thought out comments. And of course, if you don't agree with Brian's list, keep an eye out for the top five reasons why iPhone is better than Android in the coming weeks. Okay, folks, with that, it is time for me to go. Join us next week for a brand new CNET Tech Review, and until then, there are tons of great videos available every day at CNETTV.com. I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.